Badges? They don't need no stinking badges. Need an education on how to grow your business? The nice guys are here to help. Learn about great customer service, networking, and how just being nice can help you prosper. Now, here are your hosts, Doug Sandler and Strickland Bonner. Hey, nice guys on business. No, that's us. Welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> Hold on. Jeez. You, you got to wake up a little bit. Is I it know, too, is it too early? I'm, con- I'm confused already. No, it's like <laughs> noon. I had a rough, rough weekend, which we can talk about more on tomorrow's show. I had a little accident and had the, <laughs> I was driving a 16-foot box truck, and that's the tease for tomorrow's show. We're not going to get into that right now. But hey, uh, nice guy community, welcome back. Welcome back. My name is Strickland Bonner. On the other side of the mic, Mr. Doug Sandler, and today is interview day with somebody really successful, Nicole. Holland. Nicole Holland, she, she was an amazing, what a great guest. Uh, you know, every once in a while, you run into somebody and they actually give you some information that you put into action immediately. And Nicole was one of those kind of people. You know, she gave me uh, she gave me access, not that she, she had uh, the key to Acuity and some other uh, partner links that we now have as a part of our show. But she actually used them, and she she's like she's a good partner. She's like somebody that you want to chat with and have a conversation because you just feel like the wisdom is oozing from, from her pores. She's so good. I'm saying oozing in a nice way, Nicole. You realize that, right? Uh, but uh, great interview, Nicole Holland. Uh, she has a she has a um, a podcast called Help Me with the Name Strick. It's the Business Building Rockstar Show. Yeah, that's it exactly. And what's so interesting is she is actually just coming up next week doing a business building rock star summit, yeah. which I signed up for independent of knowing that you were doing an Whoa. interview with her. That's very I, I cool. might have seen her on the on the. It's possible that it was from the Nice Guys page if she posted. I, I'm not even sure, but I somehow heard about her business building rock star summit, and I'm like, oh my god, this is so cool. It's like. How many? Uh, I, I'm thinking it's like 30 speakers. It's all online too, so it's it may not be that many. I can't remember now, but it's just ridiculous. It's like so many speakers talking about incredibly interesting things, and it's all virtual. So like you don't even have to get out of your out of your pajamas. You get to and you know it's, it's best. amazing you content. Know, it's you ridiculous. Want, you want to know really what's best though? Hmm. She's got purple hair. She does have purple hair, yeah. <laughs> and, and and her her. Um, she pulls it off too. She actually not pulls off her hair, but she pulls off wearing purple. <laughs> no, no, she doesn't pull off her purple hair. She pulls off the ability to wear hair purple, and her entire uh, her entire website is branded in the same color purple, which leads me to believe that this is part of her marketing plan. Does that sound like that might be a, a something good? <laughs> oh, no doubt. And, and her podcast is amazing. The Business Building Rock Star podcast. It, it's just, she's got some great guests already. It's so interesting. I mean, she's just like this, man, she's just got so much going on. She's so driven. She's so interesting. And it, it's it's crazy. It's really good to listen right, to. But, you know, right, we've got a good. couple things to get to before we rave on about. Yeah, just calm down a little. More. Strickland, I've, you know, you went from <sighs> just a car accident to, uh, to Business Building Rock Star Summit excitement. And, you know, somewhere along the way, uh, maybe you lost your voice. <laughs> <laughs> Zero to 60 in like 2.4 seconds faster than a Tesla. That's did, me. I'm just like, that's what I am. Did uh, When you when you hit the car that was in front of you, did everybody realize it was your fault? Or did somebody say? Well, you see, that's the problem. When you rear end somebody, it's, it's always, your fault. always your fault. It doesn't yeah. matter. It doesn't matter. But we'll get into that a little bit more tomorrow. So what about the promise statement, Doug? Do you have that in front of you? Yep, I got it right here. The nice guys on business promise statement is to provide a learning experience that is entertaining and adds value to your life. We, uh, we want to be both. Um, we actually, are doing uh, at DC Podfest where we're speaking about adding uh, humor to your business podcast. So we, you know, entertainment is something that is strict. Naturally, it comes uh, from you to be able to play the guitar behind your head. Uh, mm-hmm. But I'm not a good guitar player behind my head. But I certainly know how to handle the microphone well at a uh, at a bar mitzvah or a wedding. Well, you but play air guitar behind your head well, right? I do. I had a uh, I had a great actually. It's funny you say that. I played. Uh, I had an air guitar contest at the wedding that I just did this past weekend, <laughs> and um, of course the father of the groom uh, won the contest. And then he informs, or the father of the bride, he informs me that he um, he's been to the Bruce Bruce Springsteen concert fifty six concerts. Oh my God! 56. Who is that? Uh, this was the father of the bride from my wedding that I did on um, on uh, on Saturday. Nice guy community. If you this is the first time you're tuning in, uh, understand that Strickland and I are from the entertainment world. We're both represented by the same agent. That's how we met, probably 15, 15 16, 17 years ago. Strickland is the uh, lead guitar player and band leader for a uh, for a band called Black Tie. I am uh, <laughs> I'm DJ Duck. 
<laughs> he did it. And that's pretty simple. I mean, that's pretty much, I, I have no no pizzazz to my, pardon the pun, because <laughs> that's the name of my company, no pizzazz to my name, but I, I guess I've built a business this way over the last 30 years of, of being a DJ. So uh, Strick and I met that way. Anyway. Did so, you actually get to the promise statement? I did. did you I say said, it already? Yeah, yeah, I've already. <laughs> uh, you went off on a tangent so quickly, I can't remember if I you did. actually I did. said the promise statement. I did. But you know one thing I don't want to go off on a tangent about? Hmm. The Be More Biz Conference. God, look at you <laughs> swinging everything right back into the, the topic again. I love that. And guys, you need to listen really closely here about the Be More Biz Conference because as we said last week, we have four slots available and we gave a discount code for like a day or two. And then we thought, oh my God, you know, the first six slots filled up so quickly that we took the code away. You know what? We've still got these four slots open, and we're going to be crazy and do it again. We're going to we're going to do the thirty. Was it thirty five percent off or something? Uh, it's something like thirty. Yeah, I think it's thirty five percent off. It comes to about one hundred and ninety one dollars is the uh, is the exact uh, or somewhere in there is the price. But I was having a little planning session call this morning with uh, Sean Carpenter, who is one of our, our one of our speakers. He's really excited about this. He gave me some great ideas about how to uh, create the uh, the quintessential mastermind group. Um, I think he called it the the pint glass topic. I, the I don't, pint I, glass topic. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, everything that Sean's going to do, it probably involves drinking. So. Comes back to beer, of course. <laughs> comes back, as it should. Comes I mean. back to beer. But we talked about this great, I, I don't want to give all of the uh, all of the details away, but it, part of the mastermind group is going to be about all of the topics that we are coming to table to the table with that we want to learn more about. So whether you have something to contribute or whether you have something that you want to learn as you're a part of the conference, uh, the mastermind sessions are, are truly going to be a part of that. So you got Laura Carpenter, you got me, you got uh, no, no, Laura, Laura Cannon, Laura Cannon. Oh, what did I say? Yeah, I, I just could, I just gave Laura and, and Sean a baby. <laughs> Okay, so then. Got, yeah, don't tell their you know, respective, yeah, respective others. Yes. So you got Laura Cannon, you have Sean Carpenter, you have Rob Jollis, you have Casey Cornelius, and you have myself, uh, plus, of course, the uh, the uh, wonderful musings that Strickland Bonner is going to be bringing to the table as well, uh, plus several others are going to be a part of this um, as, the, uh, as, the, uh, as an audience and attendees as well. We want to make sure that you are there. Discount code, uh, Strick, what's the discount code? Do you know? It is DCPOD. Peep. And that's because DC Podfest, we're going to be speaking the week before, like the Friday before the conference, we're going to be speaking at the DC Podfest. And so that's their discount code. We're giving it to you first. Now, uh, Nice Guy Community, I was getting ready to say, ladies and gentlemen, Nice Guy Community, if you fill those last four slots before the DC Podfest, then we won't be able to give the code out to them and you'll just have to sneak it in quick. But we've only got four slots left. We're limiting it to 10 people. It's going to be very intimate gathering. It's going to be dinner and drinks with us. It's going to be the whole mastermind stuff that Doug just talked about. Plus, we're going to record three episodes for the next week, and you can be involved and get on the episodes. Lots, us. lots of good stuff. The Be More Biz Conference, November seventh, eighth, and ninth. Just click on the show notes, and the link will be right there to uh, to get more information. If you want all the deets, all the details, they're right there on my uh, website. But just click on the show notes, and uh, and the link is right behind there. Okay, and it's going to be great. I mean, I I'm really uh, Sean really got me excited about it this morning. I um you know I I felt like okay. I need I need like to put my head in the right spot and Sean really did that. He really helped me focus on the fun stuff that's going to happen when we're all here. I'm I'm really looking forward to it, Strick. I I'm just looking forward to meeting all of these people that either I have not had a chance to meet or I've met with but never really shared a lot of business um knowledge back and forth with. It's been more one way us from the podcast and them listening and I am truly looking forward to hearing what everybody else has to say as well. I know you met Sean for lunch. I've never met him. I cannot wait to meet our like. He was like our first number one fan yeah, fun, he was guy. A fan. And he's he was like the, so involved. He ah. was the number one Funkin' fan, and he was he was there, and and he has been there. And man, he was there this morning just to remind me of exactly why we are putting this together. And I am I'm excited about it. I really am. Love it, love it. Okay, let's get to the interview now. Uh, Nicole Holland, incredibly interesting stuff. Check out her podcast at business building rockstar show it's bbrshow.com of course it's all in the show notes but hey let's get rolling with nicole holland all right let's do it nicole today's guest nicole holland will either validate everything that we are here about and we talk about and we believe in in the nice guys on business podcast or it will complete it completely, completely shoot it all to shit. One way or the other, we're going to figure it out. Nicole is a podcaster, host of the Business Building Rockstar Show, and a second podcast. I, I, think, it's, I think it might just be under approval with uh, iTunes. I'm excited. The Business Building Rockstar Summit, too. And she's a remarkable woman. She is that remarkable woman behind 
the business rock star. Building business rock star. Oh, it's just too many Bs. It is. <laughs> Nicole, <laughs> we got this whole thing. You got to fucking change the name of your company. I can't, it cannot be this way. It's wait, hold on. Let me get it right, Nicole, before I officially introduce you. The business building rock star brand. She hosts the annual summit and a virtual academy. I wonder if she has any cats. I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Nice Guys on Business podcast, Nicole. Oh, Doug, thank you so much for having me. And can I tell you a quick story? Yeah, tell it. So, as you said, I'm a podcaster and uh, I have, uh, I, maybe you know John Lee Dumas. I adore him and um, I've interviewed him twice now. The first time was on my summit. Fucking brown noser that you are. <laughs> I love him. Everybody loves John. Okay, why don't you just say something obvious like, I love America or, you know, the United States <laughs> with a flag or say, I love Pat Flynn. But don't throw, the next thing you're going to tell me is uh, Tim Ferriss is one of your biggest. You know, fans, right? No, no, but you're going to love this, Doug. You're going to love this. All so, right. I was interviewing him for my podcast and it was still like new. I, I didn't have the tongue twister down yet. Yeah. And I welcomed him to the Business Building Rockstar Summit uh, 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 show. Yeah. And he's like, first rule of podcasting, know the name of your show. And did that <laughs> on air. I'm like, oh my gosh. Yes. So I'm sorry. I created this name that is totally a tongue twister and no biggie. <laughs> all right. So I, I guess I would, let me, let me lead in with all of this because we, we just dropped a couple of big names, uh, Pat Flynn and, uh, and John Lee Dumas and, uh, and Tim Ferriss. And you probably, knowing you, Nicole, just knowing and following you a little bit uh, in, the, um, in the news and in the know, you probably go to some of the summit, you know, like the North by Northwest or whatever the hell the name of it. Did you go to any, <laughs> go to any of the podcasting paradise summits or anything like that? Well, I just became a podcaster in March and we're recording this right now in August. So it's still pretty new to me. Um, the whole, in fact, John is the one that convinced me that I should be podcasting. Well, you know, you know why, right? Tell me. Because he probably made 500 bucks when he convinced you to podcast because uh -huh. you probably uh, joined his summit and he, he knows he's not, he's not a dummy. He knows he's going to end up on his yeah. show. <laughs> Closer to 2000, but no. He, uh, <laughs> yeah, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Wait, this is for John Lee Dumas. <laughs> Way to go, John. She's been in, in podcasting for all of six months now when this, as of the recording of this, and she's already gotten, he's already gotten her for two grand. Way to go. And I know, I know his information will definitely pay in, in droves. You will make so much more than that, but it's nice that he made a sale. What can I sell you? <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, it wasn't even like that. Um, it was, I mean, he didn't, so I interviewed him for the summit and the way the business building rockstar summit works is I invite different leaders in their industries to talk about the different marketing strategies that work for them. And so I interviewed him about podcasts. Now I had not even heard of podcast. I mean, I'd heard maybe a couple, but on the computer, right? Mm -hmm. Like I don't have eye products. So, right, right. um, and I'm, I get really distracted. So I don't listen to a lot of things when I'm doing things. Not me. I'm so focused, <laughs> Nicole. You can tell I'm so focused. When I noticed Strickland, I know my, my co-host on the show, Strickland, you, you realize that she didn't call us for shit, right? <laughs> Cause she knows, she knows better. We, we don't know how to do anything other than have a very, very funny show that provides maybe minimal amount of information. So I'm, we, are, we are appreciative that nobody thinks of us as a business show, although we, it's the Nice Guys on Business podcast, Nicole. Yeah, but it's so fun. So, <laughs> so I, had John, um, I had John on the summit to talk about because I knew my listeners and my, my audience wants to know about podcasting. So, you know, I asked him the questions that, I, that my audience wanted to know. And it made sense. And the thing is, he said, he kind of said something like, you know, if you like interviewing, you're going to love podcasting. And I'm like, I don't even know about podcasting. But he's right. Like, I now have built my business. I've like in these six months, mm -hmm. my focus of my business is completely different. And it's all about podcasting. Isn't that For great? Me. It's so it. great. I started in the business as a keynote speaker. And what I realized, and I've been involved in, in the speaking business for a, almost four years now in podcasting, just under two years. And uh, what it has really evolved into is my podcast is driving all of my network. It's, it's where I'm meeting all the people that are movers and shakers in the yeah. industry. I mean, how else can I get somebody like, uh, I don't know, Dan Harris or Ariana Huffington or, or Nicole Holland? You, got, you wouldn't have spoken to me if I was just... <laughs> Love from uh, you know from Maryland. Well, I don't know. You're you know 
you're you're i'm from maryland too so oh that's right i remember that now i remember that so like can we let's get you know we're about halfway through the interview and i haven't asked one fucking <laughs> question yet all right so let so let me let me start with this i mean and this may be an obvious one um nicole your hair is purple okay <laughs> nice guy community she wears it extremely well is that your signature or is that something that you just got into as a result of just getting in a fight with a can of purple <laughs> you know, I love that you asked that. Um, people exclaim, oh, your hair is purple or, you know, oh, is that your natural color? Like trying to be funny, right? But they don't actually ask like what you just asked. So that's awesome. Um, so when I was younger, not much younger, but yeah, some time ago, I did a lot of work with kids, uh, youth and, and crisis. So I'd be like on the street and, you know, dealing with kids that don't really deal with adults and authority very easily. Mm -hmm. And so, I don't know, I just felt one day like maybe I'll color my hair. And so I had pink hair for a while. And the kids saw me then as somebody who was cool. So it was very easy to engage with them. Um, you're, ta you're tall too, aren't you? No. Well, you come, I'm, I'm you five, come, your pictures come across as you, you know what, but son, I don't know. Do you listen to the show at all? We have somebody named Sunny or Sunny Lake is on our show. She's a, a valuable addition to the show. Have, have you ever heard Sunny? I haven't heard her, but I've heard you guys talk about her. Now, Sunny appears to be in, in, uh, in photos about six feet because she has leg, have legs that go right up to her neck. But, but she's like five five, and I'm I was very <laughs> I'm six four, so I thought I thought she would probably be closer to, to six feet tall just in looking at the photo. So uh, nice guy community, if you have not had a chance yet to check out Nicole Holland, just go ahead and Google her. You will see the uh, the purple haired what I think is tall tall lady <laughs> in, the, in the photos. See, and you don't look six four to me in the photos. Yeah, you know what happens <laughs> is when you when you drink Cosmos and have small white dogs for a living, you know it's like doesn't. It's, Everybody thinks a whole different story when they actually see me as opposed to when they hear me. I am a total dork, just so everybody knows. Anyway, so wait, we, did we, we have any, again, we have not even have gotten into the that. topic yet. Right. So you're fairly new into this podcasting scene, but you're making a big hit with it. So, why, uh, all right, so the nice guy community is going to say, well, here's two buddies having a conversation about podcasting. What relevance uh, would you have for um, an entrepreneurial audience, Nicole? The summit is coming up, and I think that's pretty relevant. Um, depends on where you are in your journey, but I designed the summit really for people who are thinking about becoming entrepreneurs and who have maybe started a side hustle and who are in their first few years and they're and, and also like local businesses like brick and mortars that are going, what the fuck is going on? Like this isn't working for me anymore. You know, all this marketing that I used to do to drive people in now isn't working. So I yeah. hear about all these online things. Maybe I start, I need to start understanding them. So this is really what the summit is for. It's where, as I said, I bring together experts from different industries to talk about specifics like brass tacks, like, hey, how do I use Twitter? How do Love I get it. started with yeah. Instagram? So there's no story in it. Like that's what the podcast, my podcast, the Business Building Rockstar show is all about. It's the journey and the story, but the summit is just the actionable steps of how to do various different things because I hate the fear-based marketing. I, I love your nice guy stance. I think it's so important to be kind and add value. And um, I don't like how people are preying on people who don't know any better. No, I totally, Ugh. totally get what you're saying. The issue is that there is so much fluff and there's so much story. And I think you turn around and you look at a guy that might have been in business for 10 or 15 or 20 years and not, no offense to people that have been successful. I mean, it's mm -hmm. great that they've had this level of success, but I think oftentimes they will forget, hey, what was it like in those first six months? Mm -hmm. What was it like to build a Twitter account? Or God, I don't understand. You know, why am I going to pay 450 bucks for Infusionsoft or whatever the name mm -hmm. of that? <laughs> the program is, can I use MailChimp and how can I use that as a, as a customer relationship management program, even though it's just emails and some automation, but I'm only spending 20 bucks or it's free. So there are so many things and I'm assuming, and I have to know that, that this is, I mean, I have to assume that this is the way you approach it is that, hey, I'm assuming you know nothing and we're going to get you up to speed. And for those that you know, that know something, this is going to be number one, a refresher, but secondly, it's also going to be a, this is the next level. This is how you get your business to the next step. Is that is that fair? 
That is exactly right. And not only that, this year I'm doing something a little bit different that I didn't do last year. I'm breaking the sessions up into segments. So we're doing about 30 minutes of basic stuff, as if you've never heard of this before. And then we're going on for about 15 minutes of more advanced strategies. So um, it's it the, the summit really is for the beginner, but you're no matter where you're a beginner at, you're an expert somewhere else. No matter where you're an expert at, you're a beginner somewhere else. Totally so I true. think people are going to get tons of value from the summit because you can really pick and choose. It's not something you have to go through all of the different sessions. It's really something that's a great resource um, to pick and choose without having to go to a million webinars or ha- having to put your name on a million email lists or, yeah. you know, without having to invest money in something that you don't know you actually uh, will fit into your model or your, uh, your, 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 style. Yeah. And what the other thing that's, that I think is, is cool about it is that it's from one trusted source. So it sounds like probably, again, I haven't participated in any of your summits, but it sounds like probably you are handpicking the people that are going to be leading those particular, or maybe you are leading those particular sessions. Yeah. I uh, lead all of them and I definitely handpick all the people that come in. And it really is one person per topic and it is very specific. And so that's something that I think is very frustrating or was very frustrating to me. And the reason I created this summit the way I did, um, I would I'd go, okay, here, this looks like a good summit on this topic or whatever. And then you have all these different people just giving a sales pitch and talking about how yeah. great they are and blah, blah, blah. And, and, they, like, ha- and they have their own, their own thing to pitch. So it's, yeah. it gets to be a little bit uh, muddied in what are they providing information that's going to help the, uh, the listener or the person participating or are they trying to, again, not, nothing yes. wrong that somebody's nothing trying to wrong. line their pockets by selling something, but it's yep. very challenging when you, how am I supposed to cut through what it sales and what is actual reality here? And see, I think this is one of the reasons I really was drawn to your podcast is because I believe in relationship. And so my summit is actually a pitch-free summit. So we definitely, every one of the rock stars gives an opportunity to get a lead magnet, right? So that freebie after the fact, if somebody is is resonating with the expert, then they want to continue that conversation. I definitely want to do that. But I believe in that slow relationship building, nurturing opportunity opposed to here's what I've got. You want it or you don't. You know, I don't like that. So share this with me and let's move, let's move a little off the summit for a moment and just talk about um, the, the, the world of podcasting and, and how it has evolved over really the last several years. And, and, and we joke um, about John Lee Dumas and Pat Flynn and Tim Ferriss, but these guys were really, especially John and Pat, these guys were the, the pioneers in the field. It's no wonder that they were successful because they stayed with it. I mean, some of those guys are on like episode 1500 or something like that now, which is crazy to think. Um, but talk about why why there is some relevance to being a guest on a podcast today when you're talking to an audience of people, the majority of our nice guy community never even thought about being a guest on a podcast. Well, how could that help my business? So can you share that? I mean, it might be obvious to you and I, but, we'll, but how about what's your, your stance on that? Yeah, thanks for asking. And it it actually was not obvious to me. Um, I like I said, John really convinced me that wow, podcasting is the way to go. Now I love podcasting. I love interviewing people. I love building those relationships. But if I had to do it all again, I wouldn't be podcasting. Or I'm I might, but I would have started with getting interviews. And so that's what I actually teach people is how to figure out which podcasts are the right podcasts for their audience. So for the people they want to bring into the fold Mm -hmm. and then how to get the yes, how to really rock the interview and then how to turn listeners into leads so that they can continue again, that relationship, that conversation. And there's a lot of people I hear, like people say, Oh, podcast interviews don't work. Like I don't make any money from them. It's a waste of time. It's like, what planet are you on that you think the first touch is what you're going to sell things on? If you're going on podcasts to sell, you're you're not going to do well with that. Well, but let's back up though. Before you even get to the point where you can even try to sell online uh, to uh, or, or over the over the podcast waves or whatever the fuck you call it, how tell tell the audience, tell our community why would I even consider? Why would why should they even consider becoming a guest on a podcast if they have an online business or if they have a business? 
business where they're selling um, widgets out the back door of a pet center or whatever it is that they're doing? Why is it even to their advantage? Yeah. And even if you're not selling anything yet, even if you're just an expert and you are, you're an expert, everybody is an expert in something um, because you're going to get in front of a, an audience of people who may be a great fit for you. You know, I, and it, it's, it's about sharing your message. It's about getting your name out there. Like here, I'm sitting here in my house in Southern Ontario. Doug, you're down in the DC metro area. We're mm-hmm. having a conversation and here you've had over, I believe, 100,000 downloads of your show. People love your show. People are tuning in because they love your show. And here you are. Woo-hoo, you're <laughs> blowing me up. You're talking about my purple hair. You're letting me share about what I'm up to. So there's a good- You're cool. You never would have talked to <laughs> In high school, Nicole, oh my god, I totally you, been, you would have been that bitch. <laughs> no <laughs> way, I was such a geek. Uh, um, so, but I mean, here you, you know, your audience potentially could be my audience. They're right. they're entrepreneurs, so maybe the summit is really useful to them. So, if they are resonating, they're like, okay, I like this girl. You know, I'll check out what she's talking about. Then, hey, now your audience has. Um, also come into my fold. And that's the, really the benefit. When you're doing your own podcast, it's a lot of work as, as we know, but people right. don't realize it. Right. And when you're just a guest, you literally can walk into somebody else's house, to, into somebody else's party, have fun, and then take off. It's, it's great. It's great. I am. Um, you I've have had to the, clean up after. Uh, it's so true. I've had the good fortune of being I, not on a ton. And I know that some people make a living out of, not a living out of it, but they make their, their marketing living out of going from podcast to podcast promoting. And I use that as one of my channels. And then I take that interview, I get the download from the host or hostess, and I post it on my website. So now you have this resume of, of your entire um, audio career, you know, you can, li- it's not the same thing over and over again because your podcast interviewers ask you different questions. And it's so great when you can send to a prospective person that is interested in your products or services. And there's a lot of us out there that provide services that are, you know, they're not like just your normal, I don't sell air conditionings and I don't sell, uh, you know, cars or maybe if you do, but if you go on a show and you say, hey, have you checked out my episode on, you know, Nicole's business building rock star show. It's like, oh, that's pretty cool. I mean, it's a great angle because nobody does that. Nobody uses that as a part of their resume, do they? I, you know, I don't know. I, I can't say nobody. There, <laughs> I are people. There. <laughs> there are people, but yeah, you're, it's, it lends credibility. Yeah. Right? It oh, totally. definitely shows that, hey, you know, for, for me, it's like, okay, well, Doug found my message of value. He found me of value and he's sharing me. And so did Michelle Dutro and so did Bruce Langford and so did right. Alexander Hershka and so on and so on. So it's like, oh, wait a minute. Let me, let me pay attention to this person. So you can go from virtually unknown, have zero following, zero network to being seen as a leader, a thought leader, an up and comer in your industry very, very fast with the right strategy. And what I love about it so much is that when I am on a somebody else's podcast, I'm now reaching their entire audience. And of, of course, I put in a plug for the Nice Guys on Business podcast and anything else that they you know, have invited me to, to talk about. But uh, then I have, I, I watch, the they promote, so they take and I promote it too, but they take it and they promote it on Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn and Instagram and whatever, <laughs> whatever other channel. Please don't, don't promote anything on Snapchat. I have no idea how to follow anything. <laughs> you can use it. I'm sure it's a great channel, but I don't know what the hell I'm doing on that channel. Anyway, um, so that gives me access to all of the people that are communicating, especially on Twitter where I have a pretty good following. I can then share that with my community again. And it's just, it's almost like it's not self-serving. Check it, you know, with people that are fans of the show or products that, of things that you, you do or you sell, they want to see you. They want more of you. You know, like the purple hair thing. I think it's great because it gives you a unique edge over people that just have blonde and, you know, and brown hair. Yeah. And it, it is um, a part of my branding now. You know, you asked before and I would say originally I started coloring my hair because of the kids, but then I started working for the government and that was just not okay. So I had to go back to normal. And so I actually just quit my job 
um, as a correctional officer on the 28th of December, well, before that was my last day, uh, 2014, to start my online business. And so one of the first things I did after I quit, but before I actually had my end date was I already started kind of coloring my hair a little purpling, bit. <laughs> purpling up my hair again. I did it blue at first and then um, I cut it all off after I quit my job. And then I was like, I need something. And so, I yeah. I colored my hair purple and then it was after that that I created my brand around me. I picked my colors for my brand. I picked my message after really sitting down introspectively and being like, what do I care about? And I'm going to stop trying to do it the way other people are doing it. So I just launched the Business Building Rockstar brand just less than a year ago. So November 1st. What's uh, sorry? I mean to take you off topic, no there. <laughs> but I was going to get you, you. had said something in there that was very interesting to me. Very made made me curious. Um, so you said you cut off all your hair, and the instant that you said that, I was thinking of a, a Nicole that has absolutely no hair. What do you think of women that have no <laughs> hair? No hair. I mean, completely um, bald. What do you think? I, I think you know what everybody. I, I believe that everybody should do them like 110% authentically be yourself. And so I have no judgment. If I see somebody with a bald head, it's like, okay, whatever. I mean, my brother had cancer when he was a kid. So I don't know, maybe that's cancer. If they shave their head, that's their business. And if they like it, awesome. I don't know. You know, when I, I was out at, uh, I went with my wife to a, um, to a winery this past week. I know I'm such a fucking pussy. Anyway, so I went with, <laughs> I went with my wife to a, a winery because I, I enjoy a nice glass of Chardonnay every once and again. And um, there, there was a woman that had her head, her head was shaved. Now, again, I don't know if it was a part of, um, a part of maybe she was in, going through treatment or what, but she didn't look ill. So she just, she was bald. She was so hot. I mean, she, I, I, she was like, she was, I said to my wife, I'm like, she's hot. I mean, that, I don't know that, that look just kind of, that works for me. I don't know. It's maybe it's the same thing of, of seeing a pregnant woman. I think pregnant women are so hot. <laughs> is, that, is that bad for me to say that? Well, the, the bald pregnant women had better watch out around you. Oh my gosh. Funny. That would be like the, the, the double threat, bald and pregnant. <laughs> Oh, that would be now. See, bald and pregnant, and no, I don't want to say anything else. Uh, I would get myself in some completely in trouble. Fortunately for me, my wife does not listen to my show. But uh, then again, m- most people don't listen to the show either. Nicole, you are actually going to be the only one who hears this this, uh, this show. Um, let's uh, let's move off of podcasting for a moment, and let's just talk about you as a as a business owner. Mm-hmm. Um, I know there's got to be challenges. Now you're six months into this podcast journey, right? Is that what you said? I mean, yes. well, as of the date of, of the, of the recording. Yep. And I'm sure you've run into some big challenges too, as we all do when we start a business. It helps share some relatability with the nice guy community. What is it that are your, you know, what's the stuff that you're like, oh shit, I can't believe I did this. Or what, you know, what are the challenge that, challenges that you have in building a business? And unless you have a, a gazillion dollars in the bank, money is probably one of them. But what, what, are, what are the challenges that lead you there? That really is it, the big one. Like when, when I look back, I go, why did I do that? And I mean, I just did that again today. It's like, I put my faith in people because I'm very blunt and I'm very honest. So if so if I tell somebody I'm going to do something, if you pay me this amount of money, I am going to do this thing and, you know, I live up to that and I expect people to. And so when I spend time vetting people and I believe them and then I invest in them and Ugh. then they don't do what oh, they, that is they the were worst. Do, That's the worst. And I keep running into it over and over and I'm getting better, but I keep doing it. And so now I just kind of shake it off and I'm like, well, that was another lesson. Well, especially in the, especially in the online world too, because people feel like there's some level of anonymity that they have as a, um, Sean Carpenter, just so you know, I know what the word anonymity means. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) But so, you know, there is some level of anonymity that, uh, uh, Nicole, sorry, I know you don't know who Sean Carpenter is, but he always dogs me about my, my... Oh, you do know who Sean Carpenter is? No, but I'm just guessing he's heckling you about uh, your vocabulary, maybe? Yeah, my vocabulary yeah. is pretty poor, but anyway, whatever. <laughs> so, uh, there is some of that that goes on because people have this level of invisibility when, they are, when they're online and they feel like they're, you, know, you can't reach them. Mm-hmm. I mean, what do you, what do you, th- I'm, I'm a, I don't know if this is your experience through dealing with people online and promises made. I think it's, no, I mean, I, 
I find it online and offline, to be honest. I mean, I just think people's work ethic today is is very oh, poor nice. as a as a standard, you know, um, I think we have a very entitled, um, society that we live in mm-hmm. and people, um, in fact, I was just having a conversation before the podcast with a woman who, um, you know, people that she thought were very reputable that a lot of people really respect kind of ripped her off for 3000 bucks. And it's Ugh. like, man. And, and so that's the, I think for me, that's the biggest struggle is just knowing who to trust and then going back into that space of, I can't trust anybody. So let me just do it all myself and yeah. then getting that overwhelm and then trying to trust somebody. And it's just that spinning cycle that for me has been the biggest challenge about building my business. Um, and, then, and then how do you determine which direction you're going to go with? And again, I, I'm thinking I'm setting up the scenario for you. You help me if I'm wrong here, solopreneur, doing this on your own, working hard, facing the same struggles of money and all the other things that we are facing, but then the decision comes in. Okay, where do I put my money? Do I go to a conference? Do I spend five grand on a video? Do I do, you know, where do you, where is your struggle with putting your dollars? In that respect, I would say I'm, I'm not like most probably. I'm pretty in touch with my own intuition, if you will. And so what happens is when I get busy, I lose track and I start listening to all the advice of people. And then I get really like, I just start spinning. But when I quiet it all down and I just like step away and I'm like, okay, let me ask myself really what would be best for me? What would feel the best? And it's been hard because over the last year, as I have gained a lot of traction and visibility, I've been invited to tons of stuff. And I mean, things that I really would like to do. And I'm not even just talking about conferences. I'm talking about like small kind of masterminds and Mm -hmm. things with really high level people. And I've had to say no, because it just, it doesn't fit for me. Yeah. So, um, and then I was because, because, and help me, help me again, define this for a second, because oftentimes when you're invited to those, you are then becoming a part of somebody else's plan and not necessarily your own plan. Yes. And that's what took me off track a lot in the last, oh, year and a half. But I, in the, I would say in the last six months ish, I've gotten really intentional about it and I'm recognizing that, okay, is this going to serve my plan or is it somebody else's? And then after I ask that question, I say, well, would that be worth it? So, for example, I I was invited to an event in, in San Francisco next month, and it really is just the worst time for me because I'm yeah. in the middle of summit planning. And um, You can always give them my name, Nicole, just so you know. <laughs> I, I, I don't get invited to Strick and I. We don't get invited to anything. We don't. <laughs> I mean, are we like the, are we, does anybody even know us in the podcasting world? Or we're probably like the black sheep. If Let me invite you to Niagara and I will take you to the best wineries in Niagara on the lake. <laughs> will, will you introduce me to all the finest bald women? <laughs> <laughs> I will seek them out for you. <laughs> My wife will be really pissed at me. <laughs> we'll show up at Trieste and there'll be a bevy of bald women. Excellent. Wow. This is good. This is like my fantasy come true. I, now, now I think that Mohammed, who does all of our show art for this, uh, for this show, he'll probably end up putting the, this bald woman on the, on the cover of the Nice Guys on Business podcast cover art. Nice. I don't know. So, uh, okay. If people are interested in getting a hold of you or if they want to take advantage of the, uh, of the summit here, what's, what's the best way for them to do it? Because uh, like you said, when we were in the setup, I think the best thing for us to do is just air this really close to your summit date so we can get some promo for you. Awesome. Yeah. So it's uh, bbrsummit.com forward slash nice. And uh, that'll get you a free ticket to access all of the sessions. There's over 30. And uh, yeah. That's it's, a, it's, a, it's exciting. I know it's, it's exciting for you to put these kind of things together. You watch it all come together. Um, you know, Strick and I, we just have never gotten to the point where um, anybody respects us. So we can't, yeah. we, you know, we can't seem to put two or three people. No, we actually haven't even tried. The idea of a summit uh, sounds really cool. The other thing that we thought was, was uh, something we would be interested in doing, and I think we've, we talked about it briefly, but obviously have not made no plans to do it. We're still working on this damn uh, 200th episode thing, and, and we we are like Mister and Miss Mister and Mister non technical. So just getting <laughs> for that, I would love to have some sort of like mastermind, actual physical yeah. get together conference where you have like your you know your super fans. I think that I think Strick is going to call them the business ballers, something like that. So uh, have you ever thought about doing something like that? 
Definitely. It's definitely in the plan. Um, again, nine around the lake. Um, but I'm on a smaller scale. I've already decided to do it early in this next year to kind of test things out. But um, yeah, to me, that's that, you know, it goes back to a relationships. And that's the most important thing to me. And I actually, I'm super introverted. And traveling exhausts me like going to conventions and conferences with lots of people like i just i'm wiped out after no, and yeah. i don't enjoy them i mean i enjoy aspects of them but overall i would so much rather get together with a group of 10 to 12 people that i get to know really deeply and have those connections in person do different activities do masterminding um to me that's way more valuable than I agree. conference. I agree. Because the I agree. big conference is for their plan, right? Again, it goes back to my plan or their plan. For me, I care about the deep connection long term. And I know a lot of other people really enjoy conferences. So showing up and I was just invited to speak in February at um, PodFest in Orlando. So I'm going because how can I turn that down, right? To get to go. And no, I wasn't, wasn't invited to that oh, either. Oh, stop and, this. And not gonna, I'm not going <laughs> to. Somebody wanted to call me and maybe ask me if I wanted to speak. Speak at something, you know. It's uh, it's okay. I don't know. Speak at my event when I when I create an event. If I ever create an event, because I don't really want to create a big event like that. <laughs> Come on my stage, MC the event. I am I am so ready to to get out of my house. I've been locked in here for a year and a half now doing this podcast. We've had some we've had some minor successes and you know two hundred and all that stuff, but well, it's all bullshit. Anyway, uh, Nicole is the real deal. I mean, honestly, she really is. When I when I first connected with her, um, I was just so excited that she would participate and be a part of the show. I couldn't believe she actually accepted the invitation, and I'm I'm so excited that uh, that she um, that she is here on the show today. So. So um, any information that you have uh, that um, that you want to give to us, we'll make sure that we put it in the um, in the show notes. But uh, any final words of wisdom that I can give to the nice guy community, Nicole? You know, nice guys. Uh, if you if you resonate with me, if you're like, oh, okay, I could listen to her again. Come on by for the bbrsummit.com forward slash nice and uh, join the summit sessions. And it, it really is very casual, like this. Um, not as much f bomb dropping and not as much laughter, <laughs> but it's fun. Like it, it's fun, and you'll learn a lot and uh, very no pressure. So other than that, you know, feel free to tune in and check out my show, The Business Building Rockstar Show. It's also on iTunes, Stitcher, and Google Play Music. And um, Doug, you know, I can't wait to have you on the show as well. Oh, was that, did I get an invitation? Was that, am I in? Oh, come on. You already knew you were in. I already told you I wanted to have you on the show before we even spoke. Uh, You know, you just blew my cover. (laughs) (laughs) But here's the thing. Um, I actually already finished recording my 2016 interview. That's crazy. That's good for you. I can't. I can't seem to get ahead of my schedule. It's two interviews a week. It's like between now and the end of the year, that's like another 15 or whatever. It's 20. Inter- I don't not, My math skills are as bad as my vocabulary <laughs> skills. I don't know. Uh, we got a bunch more. How did how did you get them? Well, whatever. We'll talk about that one. Yeah. On show, I guess. Yeah. Nice guys. A nice guy community. Never underestimate the power of, uh, of nice. Special thanks to Nicole Holland. Again, all of her information will be in, uh, in the show notes. Thanks so much for being a part of the, uh, the nice guys community, Nicole. Thank you, Doug. I appreciate it. Steve O'Brien, go ahead and take us out of here. For the nice guys on business, I'm Steve O'Brien. Just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in.